Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about Koopman operator theory, finding uh, coordinate transformations that map my strongly nonlinear dynamics into a coordinate system where the dynamics appear linear in time. Uh, we've talked about the overarching goal, some of the numerical methods used to approximate Koopman operator theory, uh, and this fundamental challenge of representing these eigenfunctions, which are these good eigen measurements where the dynamics look linear. But now I want to talk about the applications. Okay, so this is this Koopman spectral an an analysis. I want to talk about the application to control theory. Okay, so one of the, the core kind of challenges in this dynamical system is optimal nonlinear control and estimation. And this is one of the huge promises of Koopman theory is that transforming into these, these better coordinate systems where things look more linear will allow us to use textbook methods in linear control theory, like linear quadratic regulators and Kalman filters for, for strongly nonlinear systems. Okay, so simple one-line commands in MATLAB, if I had the right coordinate system, might allow me to regulate and estimate even these strongly nonlinear systems. So that's like a holy grail of nonlinear control theory, is finding these coordinate transformations so that's an upfront cost, but then everything downstream in the control and estimation becomes very, very simple. Okay, uh, and if you want to know what you can do with linear control, just go check out the control boot camp, uh, where you can see kind of how easy it is to, to do LQR and Kalman filter control and estimation. Okay, so that's the goal we're going to talk about now, is how to use Koopman for nonlinear control. I want to point out, this is a vast and rapidly growing field. I'm going to give you kind of a, a little window into what we're doing in, in, in my group and with my collaborators on nonlinear control and estimation with, with Koopman, uh, but there are lots of teams across the world that are doing this, and, and so it's a huge field. Very, very important because there's so much potential once you find these coordinates of doing optimal control with simple techniques. Okay, so this is an example I've talked about before um, in a lot more depth where you had this, this nonlinear system, but if you found these good measurement coordinates, these nonlinear measurements, you can get a linear dynamical system representation of these dynamics, okay? If you had that same system with an actuator with some control input U that affects the second state X2, it turns out that in these Koopman coordinates, you get a linear control system, y dot equals a y plus b u. And that linear dynamical system encodes this nonlinear control problem. So if you have a linear system with an A matrix and a B matrix, you can write down a linear, a quadratic cost function that penalizes, so you're trying to stabilize the system rapidly. You want x to go to the origin as fast as possible and you want the control expenditure u to be as small as possible, so you're balancing these two in this cost function. And in one line in MATLAB, you can essentially cook up this linear quadratic regulator controller that minimizes this cost function given these dynamics. And in the LQR controller, you'll get three terms out because you have three states. So there will be three terms. The first two are the gains that you feed back the direct measurements x1 and x2, but the third LQR control gain is actually this nonlinear control term in terms of Y3. So essentially, once you find these coordinates, you write down your one-line MATLAB code to get an LQR controller, and what you get out in your original coordinates is an optimal nonlinear control law. So that's awesome. We've been wanting optimal nonlinear control for a long time. Uh, and what you do is if you apply this nonlinear control law, you can see this cost function here. You're trying to make the cost as small as possible if I just naively linearize my system about the origin, which is what we traditionally do, and I do LQR, I get a pretty high cost of control. But if I use this smarter Koopman linearization and I apply this Koopman nonlinear controller, I get this much, much more effective red cost function that's about three times less expensive to control the system. So it's three times more effective in this cost function using this nonlinear control law. And this, I got this with a one-line MATLAB command, so that's really cool. Okay, so that's what we want to do, and essentially this Koopman controller understands these intrinsic dynamics, the slow manifold, and instead of fighting that, it's taking advantage of it. Okay, so this is what we want to do. And the pipeline, the way I, I think of this pipeline, we want to take our data, we want to write down our dynamical system. Maybe we don't know the equation, so we want to discover these using DMD, EDMD, CINDY, whatever, your favorite method. 
we want to find these good Koopman embedding coordinates, these good y coordinates, or nonlinear eigenfunction measurements where my system looks linear. And then we want to do Koopman operator control to get nonlinear optimal control. So that's the pipeline we've been developing for years now. Um, this is kind of one of the big goals is even if you don't know your system or these good measurements, can I mine that from data and do optimal nonlinear control? And um, I think we've made some, some really cool progress. We, in you know, uh, my group and collaborators, but also more broadly in the community. Okay, so this is work with Ulrika Kaiser, Nathan Kutz, and myself. Um, so all of this stuff on Koopman Control is with, with Nathan. Um, and Ulrika has done great work showing that you can essentially discover these Koopman eigenfunctions, these good representations purely from data for unknown systems. And then you can use those good coordinates to develop optimal nonlinear control laws um, that are super effective. Okay, so this is the pipeline. You have data from some unknown system. You discover your eigenfunctions. You incorporate the effective control. And then you design a control law to feedback. Okay? And this is based on that basic generator equation before, that, that kind of PDE for Koopman eigenfunctions. So now we're going to take DDT of phi. We still get grad phi times x dot. But now x dot is not just an autonomous dynamical system. It has a control input plus bu. And you could make this more general. You could make it nonlinear control. But I just want to have this additive control because it's easier to see what happens. So I take the chain rule and I get phi dot equals grad phi times f of x plus bu. Now, if I didn't have any control, if I just had this uh, unforced system, I would have these eigenfunctions phi. So grad phi dot f is just lambda phi. Remember, these are eigenfunctions of the unforced system. And then I have this correction term because of my control input. So this is really, really cool. If I have eigenfunctions, if I can discover eigenfunctions of my unforced system, these lambda, th these phi functions for my unforced system, then even when I write down for my control system, the phi dynamics are still linear in the state phi. And there's this nonlinear in the state control input, grad phi x dot bu. So the dynamics are still linear, but now I have this state dependent actuation, grad phi x dot b. So that basically means that my actuator has different effectiveness and different characteristics depending on where I am in the state space. But the dynamics in my eigenfunction coordinates remains linear. And that's the key thing here. And that's what Ulrika is using to, to design these, these linear control laws using simple methods to stabilize these strongly nonlinear systems. Okay, Very cool idea. Um, and that's, that's this expansion here. And we've seen before that we can find these phi functions, these eigenfunctions of the unforced system using this kind of sparse identification. We find the fewest terms in a library that give phi. So we can discover these from data. We write them down with this extra controller here. Uh, and what Erica showed is that you can essentially use the same uh, quadratic cost function, the same kind of LQR cost function. But now we can represent our cost in terms of these eigenfunctions directly. So instead of trying to move the state x to the origin or to some reference value, we're directly going to steer the eigenfunctions themselves. This is a little bit of a weird idea, but I think it's very natural for lots of physical systems. So for example, if I have a, an inverted pendulum on a cart, maybe I want to stabilize it in the up position. And I can write that up position as theta equals pi and theta dot equals 0, something like that. But it turns out for, um, for that system, which is conservative, Hamiltonian system, the total conserved energy is a Koopman eigenfunction phi. And so instead of, of controlling the state to be up, maybe I want to control the Hamiltonian energy to be exactly equal to the energy of the up position. And so that's the kind of control that we're able to do now, is we're able to directly steer the energy to higher or lower values, or steer the angular momentum to higher or lower values in an optimal way. So this is an optimal way of pumping energy into the system to, to raise the pendulum or to add angular momentum to a system. And you can essentially solve this control problem, this control optimization. If this was just a vector bu, I could use a Riccati equation. But now, because this is a state-dependent actuation vector, we use a state-dependent Riccati equation solver, an S 
DRE, a state-dependent Riccati equation. But those are still pretty standard optimization techniques that you can do in MATLAB or other, um, other software environments to find the optimal solution, the optimal control as a function of your state phi, given that you have a state-dependent actuation. Okay, so that's what we did in this archive paper. Uh, and we've applied it to a lot of Hamiltonian systems, but it also generalizes for other eigenfunctions. Okay, so uh, lots of Hamiltonian systems have this conserved energy as an eigenfunction. So here we have a quartic potential well, the duffing oscillator, and the pendulum. And in each of these cases, purely from measurement data, Ulrika was able to extract these Koopman eigenfunctions, these lightly damped or not damped at all, kind of zero eigenvalue conserved energy. And then she was able to design an optimal nonlinear control law in those coordinates to change the energy value. So either to go from the inside of a well, uh, from the inside of a well up or down, or to uh, you know, stabilize the pendulum in different energy configurations. Okay. Uh, she's also applied this to systems where there's multiple potential wells. So this is called well hopping or well switching where what you can do is essentially switch your control law. So I'm gonna do an optimal control law to try to get me to this energy value. And then I'm gonna push myself over the hill and use another optimal Koopman controller to bring my energy down to this energy value, okay? So it's this two-step procedure where you can jump from one well to the next in an optimal nonlinear way. This is a problem that I've been interested in for most of my career because this is actually very, very relevant for space mission design. So each planet and moon is a potential energy well. So this might be um, Earth's potential well, and this might be Jupiter's potential well. And all of this is living in the sun's potential well, which is much, much larger. And so if you wanna do energy efficient um, space mission designs, maybe I wanna go explore the different moons of Jupiter, and when I get bored with this moon, I wanna to jump to the next moon and then Maybe that's really interesting, so I stay there for longer, and then I jump to a third moon. You have to be able to do this energy efficient, optimal nonlinear control to jump between these multiple wells. So that's a project that lots of uh, people have been working on for a long time. Uh, my undergrad advisor, Jerry Marsden, was working on this. Back then it was called the Jupiter Icy Moon Orbiter. Uh, and it's been an inspiration in dynamical systems and control for, for a long time. So we were really pleased when this data-driven control with Koopman could derive these control laws to get you into these different uh, favorable configurations. Really cool. And then as the last example, this is a higher dimensional problem. This is a double gyre model, which models ocean mixing. So you have these kind of big counter-rotating vortices uh, and you can have drifter particles, like you know maybe there's a buoy in the ocean that's drifting around in this big vo vortex uh, basin. And what Erica was able to do is using this optimal Koopman control, so finding these good coordinates for this system, and then developing controllers in those coordinates, she can essentially stabilize swarm behaviors uh, to get this kind of coordinated control uh, in this system. Very, very cool stuff. Okay, so you can read about this. It's an archive paper. Um, I really like this paper a lot. It's kind of a fun idea where you find a good coordinate system and you do control in that coordinate system. Now I wanna point out, this is absolutely not in isolation. There are tons of methods developing Koopman-based control and estimation. This is only a small handful. And if you watch this video in a year, I'm guessing there will be twice as many at least. Okay, so this is a rapidly developing field, very high potential reward for finding these good coordinate systems for control. Um, there's, so I'll just give you a very brief sketch of some of the, the big ones, okay? Um, Amit Sarana has done great work with Koopman-based Kalman filters. So nonlinear estimation problems using Koopman-based Kalman filters, very, very impressive performance demonstrations. Uh, Milan Korda and Igor Mezic have done great work applying model predictive control to EDMD models that essentially take into account the nonlinear evolution and use model predictive control for very, very effective uh, control design. So this is great work. Um, also applied to power grid stabilization. So um, really cool stuff there. There's also great work looking at switching systems. So um, Sebastian Pates uh, and collaborators have looked at, can I develop different Koopman models for different uh, 
control inputs. Maybe my control is set to zero. I build a Koopman model there. My control is set to one. I build a Koopman model there. And they use um, model predictive control and other techniques to optimally switch between these, these autonomous Koopman dynamical systems for some high level control objective. Okay? Uh, lots and lots and lots of great stuff. I encourage you to kind of dive into this. It's a rich field, very, very important to be able to find these nonlinear coordinates that makes your control problem uh, more amenable to linear analysis. Okay, uh, so in the next few lectures, we'll also talk about um, these extra hard to represent systems and how we find eigenfunctions there. Okay, thank you. <laughs>